going back to the end of the Cold War era is where we really need to start talking about the situation in Ukraine. And that is because when the Soviet Union collapsed, um, the U.S. really began an unprecedented stage of being the only superpower left in the world. When the Soviets withdrew troops from Germany after 1989, it was actually 1990, uh, an agreement was reached between Secretary of State James Baker and uh, then President uh, Gorbachev of the Soviet Union that Germany would unify and that it would join NATO and the Soviet troops would withdraw. But there was a famous promise made at that time by James Baker that said NATO would not expand one inch further. And so that was, that was taken literally. Um, and uh, uh, so George Bush wasn't pleased with that promise, but both Helmut Kohl, who was chancellor of Germany, and James Baker had made that promise. Now, NATO did expand. NATO expanded uh, several times after that. Uh, NATO expanded first to, uh, s through Central Europe. Uh, you had Romania, Slovakia, uh, and other countries. And then you had an expansion in 2004 that was very different in terms of the fact that now all of a sudden you had former Soviet republics, namely the Baltic states, which were allowed to join NATO. And this, this was a line that the Russians really uh, didn't like. And so they had been constantly arguing against NATO expansion. Uh, there were several other events that, that led up to dissatisfaction with the U.S. and, and NATO, specifically the war in Kosovo, uh, the, the actions taken in Libya, and other um, actions by NATO that had really upset the, the Russians. So in 2007, uh, Putin goes to a, the Munich Security Conference and he calls for a multipolar uh, world where the U.S. would no longer be the lone superpower because he was arguing that the U.S. didn't care about anyone else's security interests and it was time to, to move forward. Um, so. This has been, the crisis in Ukraine has been a long time coming. It's been, uh, it's been brewing for, for several years. Putin specifically invaded Ukraine this time to prevent uh, Ukraine from joining NATO. In 2008, uh, at the Bucharest meetings, NATO said that Ukraine and Georgia would eventually become members of NATO. And this was a line that Putin was not willing to allow. Um, and so he was willing to go to war to prevent it. And that's, that's what we see today in Ukraine. NATO does not want a direct war with Russia. They are willing to have a proxy war with Russia through the Ukrainians fighting, providing weapons, uh, and, uh, and uh, aid to Ukraine, but they are not willing to actively engage with forces in Russia. Uh, they are not, because they recognize that a war such as that could go nuclear very fast and would have, uh, would have um, devastating consequences for the world in general. So early on, Biden made it clear that that even if the Russians invaded Ukraine, we were not going to send military forces. We were not going to uh, protect the Ukrainians using our soldiers. Uh, and we were not going to uh, save the Ukrainians that way. But we have provided unprecedented levels of intelligence. Uh, we have provided weapons, uh, Javelin missiles and, and other um, other weapons to aid the Ukrainians in, in the defense of uh, Ukraine and to fight off the Russian forces. But a no-fly zone would mean that we'd be shooting down Russian aircraft over Ukraine, which would escalate the conflict and bring us directly into the conflict with Russia, which is something that, that the U.S. has made clear and NATO has made clear they're not willing to do.
All NATO member states are sovereign nations. They have, they have their own military policy. They can do what they want as individual countries. They do not need to rely on an okay from NATO to do so. Um, NATO itself is not getting involved directly, but Poland certainly fears a resurgent Russia and fears that eventually uh, Russia could invade Poland. And so uh, it is in Poland's interest to ensure that the Russians do not take over Ukraine. And so that's what we're seeing. Poland is much more uh, adamant about helping Ukraine with its defenses and, and uh, has been looking for ways to send fighter aircraft, older fighter aircrafts, to aid the Ukrainians and let them use them to aid against the, the Russian uh, attack. American policy has been mostly uh, to hit Russia with sanctions, uh, severe economic sanctions, um, and to uh, recently Biden um, banned oil imports from Russia in the United States. Um, this is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it does hurt the Russian economy. Uh, the Russian ruble is, re is reeling currently. Um, but it also affects uh, our economy here. Uh, we're going to see food prices increase tremendously. We're going to see gas prices increase even more than they have. Uh, we're going to see cost in general uh, increase. And so um, this is a double-edged sword in terms of, uh, of how it, uh, it, it has unintended consequences of affecting our economy directly and the economy of the whole world, really. So the war in Ukraine has exacerbated things, and then on top of that, we've added sanctions, which uh, will make things worse for the economies.